I have homework, I guess. Yeah. Yes. And I would I would honestly recommend anything from that writer director Richard Curtis. Mm-hmm. His, he's so he's been so consistently good, and I, I I actually watched the movie that you recommended about time that just came out this oh, year. Oh, did you? Okay, I did, and it was ask. terrific. So good, yep. Which he directed as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He directed so he he wrote and directed about time, which just came out with uh, Rachel McAdams, which yes. I know you like. Mm-hmm. And uh, he so he did Love Actually. He wrote and directed that. He also wrote and directed Pirate Radio. Did you see that? I one? never saw Pirate Radio. No, a great movie. Okay. Pirate Radio. He actually wrote uh, Four Weddings and a Funeral. Mm-hmm. He wrote a lot of, um, well, he wrote a lot of TV stuff before that, and then he did uh, Bridget Jones's Diary and um, a few other things here and there. Uh, oh, Notting Hill, yeah, with Nottingham Julia Roberts good, yeah. and Hugh Grant, very good. Um, so he's been uh, very consistently good. Uh, but another thing that he was involved with early on was early Rowan Atkinson stuff, which he said was he was in, you know, Love Actually, which he did great in. Uh, but another thing he was in, uh, Rowan Atkinson was actually um, another thing Richard Curtis was involved in was uh, Black Adder, which I know you like, Sam. Oh yeah, and totally. uh, that might be a good segue for us to talk about our uh, holiday blog that we just talked yes. about. So we just released. Uh, we've been we did this last year. We did it. Uh, it was a huge success last year. So we decided to do it again. Uh, this year, and we've been doing it for holiday themes, but uh, we've been blogging about it. So Netflix does not do a great job of coordinating. Like if you just want to see a Christmas movie, like just like doing a search for Christmas movies and seeing an exhaustive list of, list yeah, of that. Yeah, you can't just type in Christmas or holiday right. and search for that. So yeah. we've been putting together these holiday lists um, that uh, people have r- really uh, been attracted to, which we <laughs> certainly appreciate. And yeah. certainly since it's so much work to put together. <laughs> uh, so we put together a holiday uh, list. And if you go to our website, 12aproductions.com, uh, we have an exhaustive list exhaustive list of a lot of the holiday movies, the Christmas movies that are out there available on Netflix. And I think, uh, what I said, there's 120, 120 something, something like, different yeah. movies and shows, and, which blew me away that yeah. there was that many of them. Yeah, yeah. and uh, that was a new, I would like to do another one that's just like, um, it, it's just the Christmas episodes, because there's a lot of great Christmas you know, episodes oh, out from there. from like a whole yeah, show, like, like Seinfeld's like the Christmas episode, lot, yeah. or Office, or whatever. Yeah. So, um, uh, so we put together this holiday blog, and uh, so a, a part of that, so we broke it up in different categories, like the comedies and the dramas and the miscellaneous and the TV shows and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Uh, but Steve and I also did our uh, our recommendations, and uh, my recommendations, I decided to stay away from sort of the classic stuff like Love Actually and uh, White Christmas, which is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I decided to focus on like the lesser known stuff that's on uh, Netflix that I saw. And right. uh, my number one choice is uh, the Black Adder Christmas, which uh, Rowan Atkinson and Richard Curtis was uh, a part of. So, uh, Steve, why don't you ta- tell me a little bit about your list, what you picked, and 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 why? Well, uh, you know, I. I picked uh, White Christmas and Love Actually, <laughs> which, which were great. No, they're good movies. Yeah, 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 they're good no, movies. I mean, those were honestly two of them because I'm, you know, I'm not that big of a uh, <clears throat> of a holidays right. movies guy type of thing. And so, but those were two that, yeah, I watched them enough that I could call those actual. Um, um, you know, traditions, if you will. Yeah, and the one, it, it seems like both times we've done these holiday lists, we've always had just one movie that we both had on our list. And uh, this time, the one movie was 12 Dates of oh, yeah, Christmas. Yeah, was 12, that it? yeah, 12 Dates of Christmas was the one that we both <laughs> happened to have. Uh, now, have you seen it yet? Or uh, No, I have not seen it yet. I, I actually, the one that uh, I haven't seen it yet, and I honestly don't know if I'll get around to seeing it because I'm really interested in seeing that Midnight Clear one. Oh that I right, about, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, that was um, good. because it it seems a little out there. And what it is is it's a story. It's a small town, and it's a story of these five people um, who are just down and out of their luck or depressed or whatever. Right, and like you know, verge of suicide type of thing. That um, it's how their interactions with each other and their crossing paths 
affects each other's lives and changes their lives on this Christmas, right. you know, Eve time frame. And so that one I actually really, really want to. But I probably will have to watch 12 Dates of Christmas after that just to get the more uplifting fun back yeah, make into Make you me. feel better. About, <laughs> make yeah. me feel better about myself yeah. Yeah. <laughs> after yeah. this depressing holiday movie. So, yeah. And then my last one on there was just the uh, DreamWorks Holiday Classics, which I, have, I haven't seen all of them, but I've seen some of them because they always release those with the DVDs and stuff. Um, but those are just good, entertaining, funny. I love the short Anytime somebody like Pixar or anybody's doing a short, you know, those are really, really good. There's a um, Cars, there's an entire Mater oh, yeah, thing Mater, yeah. on Netflix that my son loves. And they're honestly really good. And it's just a bunch of three-minute little things, you know, is what it is. So. Yeah, I just had my niece and nephew over, and they loved the – I showed them that uh, Madagascar short stuff. And mm-hmm. they, they, they ate it up. It's short. It's quick. It's yeah. funny. It's, it's yeah. funny. It gets right to, yeah, it gets right to you. It uh, doesn't necessarily need a lot of, you know, voice or anything like that. There's so much you can tell with just sound effects and right. animation. So, yeah. Now, speaking of uh, the dark stuff that you were talking about, my my top uh, recommendation was Rare Exports. Have you seen that one, Sam? No, I have not. Uh, Steve, did you? No, okay. I, I had seen it when I was looking through the list, but I didn't. It was like I, I wasn't even going to put that on my list. Yeah, really. yeah. So it, it, it's great, and uh, I, I put it what I wrote in my in my uh, explanation of it. There's a great. So just to set up the premise is it's not to focus on the happy. Uh, Santa that gives good gifts, good gifts to the good children. Uh, it's to focus on some of the other folklore that focuses on more of the darker sides on uh, of Santa. And uh, it's 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 modern day. It's actually a Norwegian film uh, that focuses on sort of the darker, like I said, the darker sides of Santa. And basically, these Americans are in Norway and they're uh, on this giant hill digging up the grave of the original santa Mm -hmm. and so they they dig up this this grave and they let loose you know this evil that they weren't uh, intending on setting loose uh and there's uh uh, kids being kidnapped and all this weird stuff going on there's this one kid who's like doing his homework and he he knows what's going on but no one will listen to him obviously right and uh, so uh, obviously there's like the Santa is the villain character and there's this uh, one line, uh, not to give too much away, but there's this one line where they surround uh, the original Santa with dynamite. And this guy says, um, <laughs> if you've ever wondered how Santa could be in a bunch of places at one time, you're about to find <laughs> out. <laughs> nice. And if you think that's funny, you're going to love this movie. If you, if, you, if you didn't think that was funny or uninteresting, you, you won't enjoy this. But mm. it's, a, it's, it's uh, obviously a darker take on things. Right. Uh, the only thing, and I, I said this in my blog, the only thing is, you know, they dig up original Santa and you do see old man penis. Oh. At a certain, yeah, so um, ah. if you can get through that, it's kind of weird. And they don't like do a close up or anything like that. Right. Like they keep it's it in the shadows. Yeah, right. Yeah, but a, at the same uh, point, at the same point, you're like, is that old man penis? And like, you want to look like, is that old man penis? <laughs> uh, Are they dude. really showing they old really... man penis? Uh, but <laughs> it only gets awkward if you rewind it in slow yeah. motion to see if for sure that was old <laughs> right. man penis. Yeah. <laughs> but at, at the same time, it's a really good movie. It's a really good, uh, untraditional movie, which I know that you're interested mm-hmm. in, uh, talking about today. So, yeah. No, uh, well, that's uh, that might have to be on the list then because that line is like cheesy funny, and so um, and I always love a different take on um, you know the same story type of right. thing. The Byron Chronicles, their version of Santa is the same type of thing. He's is actually a he's actually a uh, angel or a demon that did a lot of bad things, and so his because he was <laughs> evil to children, his right. punishment is he gets let out of this prison that he's in every Christmas Eve to deliver to children and make them all happy. Hmm. And that's his punishment, and that's Santa. Hmm. So it's a yeah. So I like the uh, I like the take on this fact that Santa is an evil uh, person type of thing. Now, speaking of which, did you get any responses? I, I did. I got a couple of them, and they're they're out there. Um, well, one of them's not too out there. Uh, two of the responses were the same that we got, which was Christmas <laughs> Vacation, which sounds like is a lot of people's traditional uh, you know movie to watch uh, comedy. Right, thing, which so. which here in Arizona, I know Harkins has been playing. You know, they do like Tuesday nights. They show a lot of old movies. And uh, last weekend, I got to see Christmas Vacation in a theater with like a packed theater. Oh, okay. And that is always a treat to see something with a packed theater because sometimes there's like things you're like, oh yeah, that's a lot funnier than I used to think it was. <laughs> right. you know, which sounds, 
which sounds ridiculous, but at the same time, it's it's just you know going back to our, our argument from a long time ago that we had with Ralph. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just adds another dimension of being able to laugh and enjoy a movie with an audience. With an audience, it's a lot yeah. of fun. So yeah, yeah so you heard uh, Christmas Vacation. So yeah, a Christmas of Vacation was one. Uh, Eric Dew, who <laughs> is uh, from the social awkward one, he threw yes. out that Princess Bride is just a good traditional any holiday one, and so <laughs> he actually watches that one. That's a lot. interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was interesting. Um, and then another <laughs> one, and this was actually. Um, uh, my father-in-law, to throw okay. him under the bus, when every year when they wrap gifts, and I knew this about them, right. but I, I didn't get a chance to ask him exactly why it is, <laughs> the Pelican Brief is their okay. traditional movie. When they're wrapping Christmas okay. gifts, like they'll watch White Christmas, but they always watch the Pelican Brief. Okay. And I don't even know if there's like snow in that movie, you know, no. or anything holiday at all. Nothing but for some recall. reason, the Pelican... And so that's their really fun. So it's kind of like the... My mom likes murder mysteries. They like this, you know, crime, crime thriller thing when they're wrapping <laughs> presents. I, but you know what I love about it is, it, it, like, that's their thing, right? And that and that's just it. So you know, <laughs> I mean, mine's, uh, you know, at least got some Christmas stuff to it. But it's still, it's my thing. You know, not everybody's gonna yeah. w- love love actually. Yeah, you I, know, it's not gonna be their thing. So yeah, and I love that. I love how you can take this holiday thing, and there's so many like nuances about it that are you know it's got to have snow it's got to have a romantic angle to all these things but at Mm -hmm. the same time pelican brief is their thing because it means something special to them right and to me that is really awesome yeah yeah so and then um (laughs) die hard die hard was the other one which that one i can totally get because the original die hard was christmas time whatever christmas party wasn't it right building or something so yeah die hard was another one which i had not thought about that but that would be a good fun you know Audio, some other effort, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, type of movie. So, so. Uh, I put you have a, list. a list. Yeah, I have a list. Oh, okay. uh, so, th- this is my list of non-traditional holiday movies to watch. And speaking of which, Die Hard is mm-hmm. one of the tops, along with Lethal Weapon, okay. which is the same sort of you know action, a little bit of comedy uh, vein, and takes place a lot of got a Christmas elements kind of weaving in and out here and there. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um. Edward Scissorhands is a popular one, uh, mainly because of a lot of you know the snow and stuff at the end and carving the ice sculpture and right. it's not very heavily Christmas. Gremlins, where he buys the you know the alien weird things for uh, Christmas present and it goes and it goes horribly bad. Uh, City of Lost Children. If you're looking for something very uh, sort of dark, foreign, and different, it's a Jean-Pierre Jeunet film. He did Amelie and some other uh, very long engagements, some other great stuff. Uh, it has a few uh, Christmas elements here and there. Batman Returns is a popular one. Well, that would be a good one, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, it takes place around Christmas. There's a lot of cool dark stuff there. Uh, Eight Women, uh, if you are if you like stories about women and foreign murder, it's kind of like a whodunit French film. Okay. Um, about a Boy, which is oh. interesting. There's not a lot of... It, it kind of takes place kind of wintry in England, um, but mainly the holiday angle is he, have you seen about a boy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause you would like it. Okay. Yeah. So about a boy is about, uh, he is a guy who's living off the royalties of his father. So he's kind of a playboy. Uh, but his father wrote a Christmas song that <laughs> he's pretty much living off the royalties of that mm-hmm. famous Christmas song. Um, the ref, which is on my list to see this year, uh, and trading places, the, um, uh, Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy. Oh yes, right. Yeah, so yeah. there's sort of a Christmas scene where he's kind of the drunk, homeless <laughs> Christmas, Christmas person. Guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, I have uh, in film history, I have a few other offbeat movies to talk about. But um, the last one I want to mention is Children of Men. Have you seen that movie? No, I've not. Sam, hmm. Children of Men is a, Julianne an Moore's English in movie. that. Or, yeah, Julianne yeah. Moore and uh, Clive Owens mm-hmm. and uh, a couple other people. Okay, uh, and basically, what's interesting about that is it takes place in futuristic England, where uh, people have not had children for many years, for about twenty years now, uh, like for some odd, unexplainable reason. Excuse me, um, people just quit having children, mm-hmm. and they can't explain why. And all of a sudden, there's this underground movement that's talking about things that people don't want to talk about, and it deals with refugee stuff. And all of a sudden. This woman is pregnant, and they can't explain why. 
And so she's sort of this virgin and has this virgin birth to a mm-hmm. child who okay. they expect to save the world and they're going to save the... So if, you know, especially if, if you want to see Christmas in the traditional sort of, you know, light, you can sort of compare this movie. There's a lot of sort of allegory comparison stuff to the Christ the story, Jesus the birth of, of Jesus mm-hmm. stuff. So, what, But what's really cool is this is my wife's favorite movie. And uh, it's a really good movie just, like, on its own. Like, I mean, you would watch it and not think about 